Hi, best wishes to all on the occasion of this wildlife week and on this occasion I decided to start a brand new series of my uh, photography teaching through this video tutorials. So what I'll be doing is, I mean all these years I have been uh, sharing my images on Facebook on different social media and writing about it about how I shot it, some camera settings, all those things. But I thought I will start an all new series using the video tutorials where I am going to explain to you the thought process behind the images, showing you the images, what settings I used, why I used it and even when it comes to processing the images, what I did. So, it is going to be an entire teaching about that particular image through my videos. So, let us get started. Here, this is the saddle build stock uh, which I photographed in uh, Masai Mara. So, let me help you understand how I shot this with the background. So, let us get into the file. Now, let me start from the beginning. So, there you go, I am using Adobe Bridge. So, what happened is, let us understand the background about this image. So, here, this was how the bird was just sitting over there. It was just uh, doing nothing, standing over there for a long time and at some point, I noticed that it started shaking, started preening itself. That is an indication that the bird is now ready to fly. It is changed its behavioral aspect and chances are it will just fly. So, what I did is I made sure, so I pre-visualized pre the shot and made sure whatever I want, how, how I want the composition to be, I pre-visualized and arrived at the various settings. Now, if you look at this photograph, so the bird was ready to fly. So, let me go into the full screen mode. There you go. So, one step at a time, if I start playing each of the image in series, so it was ready to fly. There you go. So, it was just ready. It just took off. There you go, one step at a time if I start playing. So, the next sequence, the next sequence, the next sequence. So, frame by frame, in fact, I was able to shoot it in continuous mode and I was able to capture it. So, as you can see, the whole flight, I was able to capture it. This is a pre-visualized shot what I have. Now, the actual image if you see, so let me just go down. So, this is the image what I shot finally. This is the image which I wanted to share. Now, look, let us look at the various settings what I used. Since the lighting was quite decent, I used an ISO of ISO 400. I was photographing with my Canon 400mm f2.8 L IS2 lens. So, for the 400mm frame, I got a nice frame filling, a full frame is what I was able to get. Since I wanted a shallow depth of field, I used an aperture of f2.8. So, the lowest f number supported by the lens. And for a combination of ISO 400 and f2.8, I got a shutter speed of 1 by 4000th of a second. That is pretty decent to freeze the whole action here. And as a part of my overall calculation, I used evaluative metering. So, normally I use evaluative metering for a lot of my photographs. So, here I use evaluative metering and if you look at the background, there is not too much happening. The tonality is not very dark, not very light. I used an underexposed evaluative metering uh, compensation of one third stop. Honestly speaking, zero would have been sufficient for this. One third, two third, zero, a little bit variation is fine. So, zero would have been fine, but I used minus one third, that is still okay. And then, for these kind of images, since the light was very flat, I used a white balance of 5800 Kelvin. Normally, uh, when the light is diffuse lighting, like what you have here, a white balance of 5400 Kelvin to 5800, 6000 Kelvin is more than enough. If you do not have a manual white balance setting, then you can go for the preset of flash. So, for outdoor, the flash is in the range of 5400 Kelvin that will suffice or even you can go for cloudy white balance. And then since the action was supposed to, uh, the action was going to happen where it is moving, so I used AI servo. So, for Nikon guys, it is AFC, autofocus continuous where it captures action where there is continuous movement happening. Then the focusing point what I did, since I knew like okay, it is going to fly a single focusing point, may be difficult to get it on the face. So, in Canon 1DX Mark II, we have this concept of creating clusters. So, I used that flexi zone, so where I could expand the overall focusing point, face it around the face. So, these are the various camera related settings I used to basically execute this shot. Now, here as you can see, I used a composition of placing it more to the left side. So, that gives a more space in front of the bird. 
So now when the bird was ready to fly, it started flying, I used in continuous shooting mode so that like I shoot at at least like say 14 frames per second because I want to capture action. That is what I did for this particular image. Now once I was able to capture this image and get it, as you can see since the bird is both black and white, so the dynamic range of the camera comes into picture where as you can see in the original image, the blacks are a little underexposed. Normally, I always expose for the highlights. That means I want to make sure I get the whites proper. So that is what I did. Now, let us see how exactly the post processing of this image comes into picture. So let me show the complete workflow. Once I copied it here, I choose a particular image where the whole wing spread is there and then nice action of it about to take off. So I decided to use this particular image. Now I am using Adobe Bridge here in this case. So fair enough and I shot a lot of this in JPEG. So trying to, trying to help those folks who shoot only JPEG, how you can still process your image, I am going to show. So here what I did, uh, this is Adobe Bridge and then I go into Adobe Bridge, I do a right click. If you double click, chances are it will directly open in Photoshop. So what I do, I do a right click and say open in Camera Raw. So there you go, I open this in Camera Raw. Now here, if I steady this image, as you can see, the blacks are basically a little underexposed. Even the neck, the eye, you are not able to differentiate that. Fair enough. So what I do is like I increase the exposure. So let me just brighten it up a little. Now because of brightening up, now I am able to get back the details in the shadow area. So what I do, now I decrease the highlights. As you can see, the whites of the image, the whites of the bird's feather, I underexposed it separately and then even little bit shadow details I increase. So by increasing the shadow details, the blacks, the details in the blacks, it come out. So then if I want, I little bit increase the contrast, making sure again I do not underexpose my blacks. So that is what I do. Little bit of vibrance, increase the vibrance, not too much the reds. I want to enhance the reds. I got that. So overall, if you see, I'm happy with this image. Normally for my uh, nature images, I don't like to process too much. So over processing is not good. I want to showcase what I saw out there. Nothing more, nothing less. And a little bit of punch is fine by varying the contrast some of those. So I got these things and now I'm going to go open this image in Photoshop. So when I click on open image, it opens in Photoshop. So let's go to Photoshop over here. There you go. So it's a little slow, no problem. There you go. And then based on uh, where you want to post it. So for my Facebook normally or for social media, I go ahead, increase the image size, the height to be 1200 pixels. So 100% overall, the image is pretty good. So all I want to do is uh, I want to check my levels. There you go. The right side highlights the shadow overall levels is absolutely fine. Okay. Filter sharpen smart sharpen so i keep it at around 80 pretty good i say okay and there you go and of course when i'm trying to share it online i use my logo on the image so i have a ready-made logo control a control c i copy the logo and control v i just paste it over here so there you go and then of course for the processing of icc profile those things i do and i save it as you can see this is the final image what i have got which right from the planning process of the various camera related settings, I explained it to you and the thought process how I basically captured it. Now, if you are keen about learning photography, so the other thing what you can do is basically get on to my website learn.sudhirshuram.com where I have various video tutorials. So whatever I taught you, a lot more than this. As you can see here, I have basics and advanced uh, course over here, online video tutorial where you go into that. So you have at least close to around six plus hours of teaching online. So in a systematic way, one step at a time, you can learn at your own pace. No need to hurry up. You have unlimited access for a full one year. You can sign up and basically start learning about the concepts of photography. Then again, you go back, you have even post-processing then even when it comes to uh, upgrading your equipment from camera lens you even have the ultimate guide to camera and lens buying where I share about what you need to look out for when it comes to 
camera selection even for lens selection what you need to do. So a lot of these things are there which you can subscribe for uh, unlimited access for one year. So hope you like this new series of mine and please do go ahead share this video with your friends, contacts and others who are interested in learning photography and let's share the knowledge of photography online. And of course, uh, don't forget to like my page, come back to my page uh, and I'll be sharing a lot more of these kind of tutorials for you to learn. So it's me here, Sudhir Shivaram, who is helping you become a better photographer day by day. So let's learn together. Thank you and good luck.